Hello everybody, welcome to a extra video which is a tech tips video and this one's going to be about uh, a little secret feature which you can find in most televisions called a service menu and the service menu allows you to unlock some extra features which you may not know you actually had on your television so on normal television menus you can control things like the brightness and the contrast and you probably have other options for sound and things of that nature but what you may not know is that there is a secret menu which you don't normally have access to and today we're going to teach you how to get access to that menu and how you can then use that to unlock some secret features which you may find really really useful now all televisions have different codes which you need to enter in order to unlock this menu and if you're not sure what the code is for your television then the best place to go is somewhere called AVS forums I highly recommend it, it's where I normally go to get information about anything to do with audio visual stuff it's a great community there like always with these things I would strongly suggest that you only touch something if you know what it's doing if you're not sure what any of these options are in these uh, extra hidden menus then just do not touch them because there are some things in there that can make your television a little bit weird so yeah definitely make sure you know what you're touching before you touch it so most televisions it just involves uh, going onto the menu and then entering a hidden code and that will normally unlock the menu for you so as you can see on my television I've just entered in the code 1147 and this is unlocks the special menu which has loads of extra options a lot of them may not make a lot of sense but um, like for exam example this one's analog digital adjust this is only used for analog television which we don't actually have in the UK anymore so this one isn't really very useful but it adjusts some picture quality for the analog digital converter uh, on this this allows you to change what the default uh, picture settings are so the brightness contrast color so every, if you ever go to a new channel or something like that is that's what the default values are which normally are set very high out of the factory so you may want to change these if you're often changing inputs and stuff like that this allows you to give you some fine control over the color temperature and white balance you can actually change the RGB values to a very fine control which is a little bit better than just the usual warm normal and cold that you get if you like a bit of fine control over your colors you can do that from the engineers menu so some people might find that really useful if you find your pictures like too cold or too warm or can't get it just right there are some options for sound as well so you can uh, change the uh, treble and bass if you may be able to do that from your normal menus anyway normally you can but this is a good one you can change the volume curve so you can change like how how high the maximum volume is and also like how how the curve is so like you can change the as you can see there you can sort of change you know what the different levels of volume are which is pretty cool some people might find that really useful this lets you change things like the volume of the line out or scart out if you have any output sound from your television into like a stereo system or some other surround sound system or out of your television you can change the volume of that so that's always uh, useful sometimes that can be too quiet or too loud uh, like at the scart out maybe you'd be using that for um, DVD recorders and things. This is some of the main stuff which is really useful to find in the engineers menu. This one is the backlight frequency and this changes the rate of flicker that the backlight has. So the LED backlights sort of flicker at a certain rate and if that's too low you can sort of see the screen flickering. So you may want to, you can sometimes change that to a higher value and that will reduce the flickering effect you might see sometimes on dark images. So that's really good to have sometimes. Uh, 160 Hertz is normally more than enough you can also change the actual brightness of the backlight itself which is really useful because uh, sometimes you know when you've got a dark scene on the screen you, it's black but you can it sort of looks washed out this can change the black levels essentially so you can actually change the brightness of the LEDs themselves and as you can see when you switch it to zero the TV looks like it's off and when you put it to 100 that's obviously maximum brightness so this gives you some very fine control over the brightness of the television itself and that's really really useful thing to know and can really sort of make a massive improvement to your picture quality because that can be set far too high sometimes on this television and possibly on quite a lot of televisions as well you can change the levels of the backlight you can have two different values so you can have one for the normal and one for the what's called eco mode so that's really useful because what I've done is on my normal mode I've set the backlight level to around 65 
and uh, then when I've put gone to eco mode, I've changed that to a really low value of about 30. So if the lights are all off and in bed or whatever, as you can see there, it just means that I can sort of make the screen a lot darker so it's not really bright and doesn't interrupt with my sleep or whatever because I didn't like to have the TV on to get me to sleep. So turning the backlight right down is really useful for that, as you can see. There's some other options in here which most people don't need. I mean, one of them is Watchdog. I mean, that should be off really in the UK. We don't use that. That's normally for uh, European channels sometimes have instructions to turn the TV off, like when the channel shuts down. Uh, you can change, don't touch aging mode, whatever you do, because that's just screws your TV up completely. Um, never touch that. But your test pattern can be useful. This allows you to put different colours on the screen, so white, red, uh, blue and green, blue, and other different colours as well. So you can just test. If there's any, if you find you're having problems with your colours or something like that, that can be a good diagnostic tool. So that's very useful to know that's there sometimes. Power mode is really useful because what power mode does is uh, if there's ever a power cut or you switch power off to the TV from the wall or whatever, this uh, tells the TV what to do when power is restored. So you can get it to either come straight on, uh, whatever the last state was, so whether it was on or off, it'll go back to being on or off. Or by default, it's just off. So when you switch the power back on, the TV just stays off. But some people can find that really useful, especially if you're in a property that's prone to power cuts or something like that. And you can also get some system info as well, which is always sometimes useful. And on my particular system info screen, there's a little smiley face, so that's always nice to know. And you can also normally do things like upgrade firmware from the service menu as well. So if you ever were interested in upgrading the firmware of your TV, that's probably where you'd do it. So in conclusion, the service menu is definitely a really useful tool for some people who are looking to get some extra options and control out of their television. Like I say, just be careful not to touch anything if you're not sure what it does. As always, just give us a thumbs up if you like this video and a thumbs down if you didn't. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care and ta -ra.